Hi, I'm Jenny, Benevolent Dictator at the Botany Bay. And after you've done stuff with the things you bought, we figured you could use some music. So we're happy to present to you Musical Musings, a showcase of local music, and Marissa is the host. Hey everyone, I'm Marissa Hempel, host of Musical Musings for WBON, and we are so happy to have Botany Bay sponsoring us. Now it's not necessarily a requirement that you have to buy stuff to do stuff with, but it is highly recommended. Right, Jenny? That's right. Visit us at 980 Commercial Drive in Richmond or 420 East New Circle Road in Lexington. All right, are you guys ready? Here's another edition of Musical Musings. Hello, and welcome to yet another edition of Musical Musings with WBONTV. I'm Marissa Hempel, and we're here with Bad Mustache, who is returning, and he's bigger and better than ever. And we also have a new comrade here, which is Ross Smith here. Hi. Not the YouTuber. Unfortunately. Different. Not the guy with his grandma. Yeah. You could do that, though. That might be cool. That's true. I have a lot of grandmas. <laughs> Wait, you have, like, more than two? I'm going to have such a bad time during this interview. Let's just keep doing it. All right, let's go. <laughs> I do. I have, I have, uh, yes, I have several grandmas. That's four. true. He does have, like, an extended family. Are you serious? I'm yeah. jealous. I like, given, like, stuff. Yeah. Extended family. Yeah. yeah. I do a lot of stuff on, like, Thanksgiving and Christmas. It was a really weird way to sort of introduce that. Yeah, sorry, I don't know why, but I just, it yeah. felt right, like, you know, the grandma Ross thing. <laughs> I have four grandmas. <laughs> and here we are at Musical Musings, which, before we get into this, I should mention, we yeah. are sponsored by the wonderful Botany Bay, which they have a new location, which, by the time this goes out, you guys are definitely going to know about. It's at 1757 Alexandria Drive in Lexington. They're not at 420 anymore, which I know is a crisis, but they're still here in Richmond at the same location, which is a 980 commercial drive. So, we're glad to have you back. Jesse, but we definitely so want to hear. Here. Let's start with Ross. Ross, why don't you give us a little bit of info about you, besides the fact that you have four grandmas, because yeah. we've already established that. Well, that's the only thing important. About <laughs> so, now, um, uh, so I'm like, I'm 21. I'm from uh, Cynthia, which is um, pretty close to here. Uh, um, I've been making music with Jesse since like we were like, we 16. Were like yeah, 16 years old. Um, I just graduated from college, and now I'm, like, just in Lexington, still making music. I'm working on an album. I'm working on a project with him. Uh, what was your degree in? I, uh, I made an album. Um, uh, theater and film. Okay. Yeah, so I did, Appropriate. Like, yeah, sp like, yeah, sort of specialized in, like, acting, like, mainly just acting in the shows. Like, I didn't do much tech or anything like that, but, yeah. Yeah, made a web series there while I was there. That was cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, Jesse, tell us more about Bad Mustache, because last time you were here, you were kind of figuring out, you know, what you wanted to do, and now you've kind of evolved, in my opinion, mm -hmm. which my opinion means... A lot to me. Well, you know, I thank you. I appreciate your opinion. But yeah, I mean, you've really evolved into, like, something totally different. Absolutely. And, well, maybe not even totally different, but totally exceeding, like, what I would have expected. Mm. Which sounds bad. No, I, that's it good to hear. That's awesome. It's expectations. But, <laughs> so tell us about Bad Mustache yeah. and what's happened. Okay, so I'll start with the name because I get asked all the time about like where that name came from. And it came from nowhere. I just, I tweeted one day in like November of last year. I was like, I was like, and I'm now entering the Bad Mustache phase of my life. That was before I had like any of the song done, songs done from the album. I was just like, it was a thought that popped into my head. And I was like, all right, I'm going to go with this. And then... When the time came for the album to be released, like two weeks before, I was like, hey, what should I be my artist name? And I was like, Bad, bad Mustache, because I'd already changed all my like Twitter handles and everything to that. So like, it's just something that purely came from nowhere, and I don't know why I stuck to it. But I didn't know it came from a tweet. No, yeah, a tweet that That's I tweeted in November. Yeah, it's the worst. It We're sucks. learning so much new stuff here, like in real I'm time. I love stuff. it. Yeah, Ross is like, I had no idea. <laughs> Well, no, that's dope, though. I like that. Um, Bad Mustache, I feel like, has taken on kind of a new level, really, because you put out this new album, 50,000, right? Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the album? Yeah, um, so it's 50,000. It's eight songs, I think, um, all originals. I uh, There was one song called Very Good Friends on there, which is, like, the weirdest song on the album. But um, it's actually a recording of uh, the singing group I'm in on campus, Echoes. Um, I recorded them doing a song they were trying to work on, and we um, slowed it down and pitched it and everything. It sounds really weird and creepy, but I like it a lot. But the album itself, um, so it's titled 50,000 because uh, I was at a wedding in Berea not too long ago. It was a family wedding. And I was sitting there with my mom, and I was, like, talking to her about, like, all this stuff. Like, I think I have, like, like 
stomach issues and stuff like that. I could throw up all the time, like when I'm eating, like it's just bad stuff. And uh, she was like, "It sounds like you need a fifty thousand mile checkup, like like with a car or whatever." I mean, that's how that works, right? You do that with cars. But um, that was and I was 90, like, "But yeah, continue." Something, anyways, whatever. If mom got that wrong, I don't know. Shouts to mom, love my mama. But uh, <laughs> we all love our mom. <laughs> but I do. That like really resonated with me. I was like, "That's just kind of where I'm at." Like, I kind of just need to check in with myself and see like what's what's going on because it was a lot. And yeah. Well, God I feel like. Mom. Mom. Yeah, shout out shout to mom. Out to, out to mom. For real, we all—I okay. mean, my mom's an angel. I don't know about mm. your all's moms. I love my mom. <laughs> quote me. <laughs> yeah, quote it right now. <laughs> so, Jesse, yeah, um, it's kind of funny because you're at this kind of point where there's changes. You know, you're about to graduate. You just released an album. You're kind of killing it right now, and other changes in life, personally, I guess. And it is, it's kind of like that checkup, right? Yeah. So is that kind of the thematic behind the album? Yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't say there's a story to the album necessarily. It's not like a, there's not a progression of a character, like per se. But it is a, just a slice, like a snapshot of where I was uh, in my life, like January, February, April, March of this year. Um, and yeah, and I'm, I'm proud of it. You know what I mean? Like I'm really proud that I was able to be that vulnerable uh and like real because like not all the songs in the uh, on the album are like true stories like some of them are just storytelling but some of them are really real and like really personal and it's the first time i've tried to do that and i think it paid off but so. well that's kind of what it's all about and that's kind of the theme that everybody keeps saying is like you know really the whole reason we do music obviously these days is not to make money it seems like right. <laughs> especially with streaming exactly it, I, I say that every time and i'm like i sound like i'm this anti-streaming <coughs> person which i'm not but it's just like you're not in it to make money it's about exactly. to make a personal connection with hopefully a wide audience exactly right? yeah so the one thing i want to ask before we jump into the first song is you mentioned the choral mm. thing on eku which you're involved with which mm -hmm. we know and i was listening to your album and a lot of it is really choral heavy like i was kind of surprised to hear that backup so mm. tell us about how those backup vocals yeah so um the backup vocals are usually the last thing i do in the recording process um beside well I'll, I'll do uh like last takes of final vocals of the lead that i like a lot but um so for backup vocals it's i literally just sit in front of a microphone put it on repeat and just try and ad lib and like hear a melody or a, or a harmony above the melody um or below the melody <clears throat> and I just mess around until I find something that works, and then I just throw it on there. I usually auto-tune the crap out of the, the background vocals because it makes them sound a little more ethereal, uh, and I mix those differently than the lead vocals. But that's just, yeah, and that's definitely a big part of my, like, uh, choral background is, like, being able to pick those parts out. Um, it's something that I think I bring to the table as a musician that makes me a little more unique, but it's not, like, a super unique thing, but it, it helps a lot to have that background. Yeah, in a way, when I was listening to it, I was kind of surprised because mm. I knew that you had that background, but hearing that extra, because I'm used to you as like kind of a single vocalist, mm -hmm. and now we've got Ross in here too <laughs> to, you know, back you up a little bit, but it was kind of cool to hear that you really, really thought these layers through, it seems like. Yeah, and for the most part, absolutely. Uh, like Poolside, the thing with Poolside, it was about a minute of a song uh, that I really liked, and I've so had, <laughs> so I actually I had, I had a version of Poolside. I'm so mad at you. That I, like, I only sent to him or something like that. It's this beautiful, like, spacious keyboard. It's a great song. Uh, it, no, well, he the, has the this, other uh, version that we're talking it is, about. It is a great okay, song, okay. but there's this original version that he made, like, a while ago. It was one of the earliest songs, like, on 50,000. And uh, for so long, this one summer, I remember he sent it to me, and we would play it all the time, and he was like, man, I hate this mix. <laughs> but I was like, this sounds, it sounded very, like, Frank Ocean. It was just these, like, uh, it was this really basic keyboard, um, just from GarageBand with like this reverb, and it was just this like really bare track of his voice. And um, the mix, like, th I mean, the mix sounded rough, but like, it, I don't know, it was raw. I love the keyboard on it, but the, right. I, the, it still sounds good on the album. Like, I like the guitar version, but I loved that. Yeah, I, I made like a. I think I made like. Um, a flip, a flip to it. it. Yeah. I made like a remix. Oh, did you really? Like drums yeah. and like guitars. Yeah. And I sent it to him on his birthday. Like, did he just use it? Because I loved it. I loved it. I mean, you put it on SoundCloud, didn't you? I, no, I didn't. Maybe oh. we should. 
Maybe yeah, this might be the impetus <laughs> right now for this. Well, I definitely want to kind of hear what we're talking about here so people that are watching and listening can kind of get a feel. So do you guys have a first song that you have lined up? I think I'm going to do White Kia Soul first. Right, which... So this is the uh, my last song. My hairs are standing up because I'm like, <laughs> I love this song. I can't help it. Uh, yeah, so this is the last song on 50,000. You put on... You put it as the last track? Yeah. This is okay. The, I'm kind of shocked, ultimate. honestly. I thought you'd lead with that. Yeah, I live with the mountains, and we can get into that later, but, like, okay. I chose the, the reasons, like, why I put whatever I put it, but, yeah, all right. Okay. This is <coughs> White Kia Soul. We took the L train all the way to the airport to catch a game you didn't care for in the city you had already been to and there's a million reasons why you're someone i still care for like when i cut my hair too short and you calmed me down whoa i didn't think it was fair whoa cause we were right there I miss you when I wake up And I can't go back And I miss your laugh And I miss your hands I miss your touch Yeah, it meant so much No, I won't pretend No, I won't pretend Yeah and I remember all the things that we've been through You were my best friend and nobody compared to And yeah, I miss your white Kia soul And yeah, I miss your white Kia soul From the first day you drove me home I never felt alone and I hope that it shows do you remember that time we were driving back from somewhere? Can't remember, but you were real tired Couldn't keep your eyes open yet You were kinda hoping I would drive the rest of the way home And I was tired too but I did for you And the pictures you gave me are still in the frames Yeah, I get sad when I think of your face But I hope you're doing better Wish I'd have been there for you Know you cared for me And it's hard to love me But you did your best And it hurts my chest to Think of what we could have been If I had to, I'd do it again and yeah, I miss your white Kia soul. And yeah, I miss your white Kia soul. From the first day you drove me home, I never felt alone, and I hope that it shows. And yeah, I miss your white Kia soul. And yeah, I miss you, white Kia, so From the first day you drove me home, I never felt alone And I hope that it shows oh, oh, oh. In your white Kia, so Why do I feel like I'm about to cry right now? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very like, sad song. <laughs> it is. And, uh, like, that's why I wanted to ask you, and I hate to do this to no, you. Go ahead. I want to know the writing behind this, you know. Like, this was... So, I don't know. Maybe I'm a puss, and I just can't help but, like, cry all the time. <laughs> uh, this one... Uh, so this one was the last one I actually recorded on the album. Really? Yeah, it was the last... It was, like, the last takes I did in, like... It was a crazy moment because this is the one song on the album that is 100, like, completely 100% true. Like, 
definitely real experiences, definitely like calling back on specific memories. And, um, and it makes it just crazy, you know? Like, uh, I remember recording the last, like, take of the last line there, of, like that low part of when the first day, you drove me home, that part. And I was just like finishing it in tears. Like, and that's like the take I used was like, I was like, Are you serious? Yeah, like it was just a crazy. Just That's a crazy so visceral, intimate. I love it. Like, yeah, it's, I didn't know that. It's yeah, like, it's like in tears, like as you were seeing it. Yeah, I remember when when I first got that, like when I first opened that in yeah. my email when you sent me like the the rough cut of that. That was that was amazing. Yeah. Oh. But um, so yeah, definitely the most vulnerable song on the album, and it's the one that people like the most. So. If that's, you know, any teller, I think. Well, maybe it's because of the emotion. Exactly. You know, like, so, like, I wanted to hear that. Like, I always have hopes that whenever I have you people on, <laughs> you people, you whenever people. I have you people on, I'm like, oh, I hope they play this, this, and this, you mm -hmm. know, and I definitely, I'm glad you played that. But I did not know that it was, like, an addendum to the album. That's very interesting. To me. Yeah, it was, like, the very last, very last thing I did. And obviously, um, I'm guessing we were talking about this earlier. It's a Frank Ocean shout out, right? <laughs> Shouts to Frank, yeah. <laughs> I feel like everything you do is like everything, blonde. <laughs> exactly. Everything I do is inspired by that man. Oh my gosh. Why do you think that is? I've just never. This I've never seen anyone create what he creates, and that's it. Like he, he sounds perfect. His emotion is just unbelievable. Like. He's the artist in the truest sense of the word, and, like, I aspire to be that. Well, that obviously seems to be the theme so far since we've been talking is mostly emotion and stuff like that. But let's hear how – let's switch gears. Ross, how do you play into this? <laughs> since Briss is sure. about to cry, let's just change the subject. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, but you know, yeah. the playing part for you, like, in you teaming up with Jesse, like – Obviously, this came out sure. forever ago, like you said, but, you know, what does that mean for you as far as your songwriting and stuff? I mean, honestly, we've been, I'll, I'll sort of, I'll sort of give, like, a background for, like, our history making music together. Um, so, we started making music together, uh, like, right before I dropped out of high school, and I think that influenced it a lot, because, like, there was just, we had this, like, energy of, just wanting to do nothing but like try new stuff and just have fun and like um and so that's what we did and we made like two albums one of the first summers after that like right coming out of high school i was starting college and he was um just like graduating from like his senior year i made an ep called rainbow ferrari and uh we i helped him produce his first um uh, ep the self-titled jesse walden yeah jesse walden <clears throat> and um from there like um i think it influenced me a lot because uh jesse made me realize that i had needed to uh, learn how to use my voice on tracks because i'm not really a singer i'm more of like a producer like i and uh like i'm like trying to hide behind yeah bit. yeah that, that was really how i was before and i would try to like hide my voice and like i heard jesse and that kind of got me like to like come out of my shell and start trying to use my voice more and do more stuff with it. And I think on the reverse side, like I made an album called Bummer Pupper Summer and like over that year Stream Bummer Pupper really... Summer. It's amazing. I saw it. I saw that earlier. <laughs> yeah, I was I'm like, okay, I'm gonna look this up. Super, super proud of that. Um, so good. and uh, I think through through that process and he was around for a lot of it. He was actually on one of the songs called Hide. Mm -hmm. Um it's one of a lot of people's favorite on the album. It's, it's one good. of my favorites. It's a good one. Um and I think he sort of taught me to like use my voice more and come out of my shell and not hide behind the instruments. And I uh, probably showed you a little bit about like how to like experiment exactly. and like try new stuff. And like the only reason that I was instruments than just like the guitar and the voice and like use other stuff to bring your voice out. Exactly. The I think we really played off each other during those like couple of years. Yeah. If I years. if I hadn't had like the experience I had with you, like watching you produce and like watching you do what you do, like. 50,000 would not exist, and that's a fact, because I wouldn't know how to do any of the stuff to yeah. record an album. Like, yeah. this is my first stab at producing, and it was because of, like, what I learned from you. It came from just, like, uh, basically, like, one, probably one summer, I don't know, the, the time's getting mixed up in my head, but there is definitely, like, a summer where, like, um, I have this, like, flip-out mattress in my room, and he would just come over and, like, sleep on that, and we would just, like, spend, like, most of the day and most of the night just, like, trying stuff, just, like, experimenting and, like, working on music that 
honestly, a lot of it when I like look back now, like I cringe at it just because we've like Definitely. learned a lot of stuff. But Definitely. no, it's very, but that's very what it's formative all about, experience. Exactly. It is what it's all about. It's and I love the collaboration between you guys. It's awesome. And the bromance is adorable, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. We are best you friends are so forever. I love don't how this is me. unfolding live in hard. real time. Well, I'm hoping we can kind of see some of that collaboration on the next song. I don't know what you guys have planned. Are, are you ready to do this bit? I'm ready to do this bit. We got a bit. All right. So we're um, we're actually planning on releasing uh, an EP, uh, mm -hmm. probably not a full album, probably like an EP, like four yeah. or five song EP. Yeah. You guys together? Yeah. What's, what's the project going to be titled? Well, it's going I'd to be under the alias mm -hmm. of uh, Mark and the Boys. Mark, the letter N, the boys with a Z. Well, you yeah. mentioned that last time. Yeah, so yeah, I did actually. This yeah, is my. We, we released uh, like three or four songs mm -hmm. together in 2018, like, yeah, I think. Yeah, 2018, like, uh, like last last winter, not this past one, but like the one before that. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, yeah it, that's that's our that's our next stab at a full project for Mark and the Boys. And so we were actually texting this morning about that project, and we were yeah, like, yeah, we we uh, we've been talking about the name this morning. Because yeah, we were like. We should probably come have on a name. the show, we better have something to call this project that we're working on. Together. And so you're just going to revert back to the old thing and just be like, let's stick with it. Well, that's the, that's the, yeah, that's the name for our, like, our group or collective or whatever. But I, we're thinking about the title for it, and uh, we've been shooting ideas back and forth. And I think the one that we're really set on, as Ross said it earlier, uh, the name of whoever we're interviewed by. So yes, I did not know your name. I was like, <laughs> wait, are you, wait, I have a shout yeah, out? We're just gonna, we're just gonna, what? no, we're just naming it. We're just out. naming it Marissa Hempel. Yeah, just what naming can we it Marissa Hempel. Now? Just, How many just Marissas Marissa. do you know? The one that's right. in front of me right now. Right, yeah. and with one S too. Exactly. Yeah, Jesse was like, what do you want to name it? And I was like, I don't know. Let's just name it after. That girl. Just, whoever just interviews us our interviewer. and then i i didn't i, I hadn't thanks ross but now we're like tight so now you know yeah, yeah so exactly. now i know that was cool but i was actually yeah i was like sort of on the fence about coming to this interview because i realized i would have to like get out of work basically <laughs> oh i thought you were gonna say bed no 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 no, no. I, yeah i was, I then I was like my house? no Don't but then i canceled you. my shift like 30 minutes before did I text you this? I texted you last night and said I still have a spot. Or is it this morning? Uh, it was this morning. Yeah. It's kind of funny how many people like, yes. have I was been like, like you know I just can't no. work to I was see like, you, Marissa. No, yes. <laughs> yeah, but I really wanted to come, so. Yeah, Everybody's threatened and put their uh, minimum wage jobs. I'm not. I'm just guessing. I don't know. <laughs> but everyone's putting their jobs in jeopardy. It's not just you <laughs> to come here. So I apologize. Yeah, I'm no, sorry. Cool. Cool. I'm We're sorry. nine to five like in this town. A butthole. Butthole. Yeah, um, let's keep it friendly for the kids. <laughs> I should mention before we get into this next song, of course, mm -hmm. Botany Bay is wonderful. The place to buy stuff to do stuff with, which we are all fans here. And we're so glad that they make this happen because this was just a dream. And then they were like, oh, by the way, we'll, you know, help you make this happen. And here we are. So over a year later, which Jesse was here, I guess. It's been over a year. Yeah. I mean, because I came like the first couple of weeks of classes last yeah. year. Yeah. So that's kind of crazy. Like here we are a year later and you've evolved so much. So what song do you guys have planned? This next one is, uh, it's called I'll Be Right Back, I'll Be Right Here. Uh, it's got very out of tune, I don't know how. Sorry, I gotta do this real quick. No, I think I just, I just set it down. I goofed it. It was all the love in the room between you guys with Jesse and Al. It's all love. That's fine. Um... This song is called I'll Be Right Back, I'll Be Right Here, and I think it's going to go on uh, our, our next, You're on the project, on the, our, which we're actually probably going to call it the Marissa Hempley thing. Oh, the yeah, Marissa Hempley. Yeah, we actually did probably settle on that. We, we're thinking about E-Boy Autumn, but we don't okay. know. Yeah, E-Boy Autumn. <laughs> well, it, I mean, I, oh, this kills so me to dumb. say it out loud, but mm. after Hot Girl Summer, E-Boy Autumn is probably the best. <laughs> <laughs> Thick Boy Autumn is what we need oh, after thick Hot Boy. Girl Summer. We Hot need... Girl Summer went too hard. <laughs> it went, it went so really hard. hard. I love, like, good. Like, it was amazing. It good for really Hot Girl hard. Summer. It was crazy. It yeah, its, I'm sure it had its place, guys. but now, it, now it's... Now yeah, but it's look at Nicki Minaj. Already. She retired yesterday. I saw that. What? Is that real? Yes. I saw that, that tweet I and I was like, this has got to be a joke. Yeah, but I think it's just real. Yeah. That sucks. That, I think it's crazy. drama, honestly. I would guess. I mean, like, her whole career is drama, like, really, at this point. Right. But with all, like, I don't think she ever thought, like, Cardi B would come on the scene and then... Trying to just take I mean, that. Yeah, that was... That I mean, was what... Rough. Yeah. That but, was nasty. <laughs> that 
Oh, we have not, to Cardi B's, not, Cardi B's, <laughs> not Cardi B's existence, just the joke. <laughs> but also. You said, that's nasty. <laughs> For those listening, Ross is a Cardi B sympathizer. <laughs> All right, well, what, you said, what's this one called again, Jeff? This one's called, I'll Be Right Back, I'll Be Right Here. Okay, awesome. Go ahead. All right. Staring at the sun and screaming loudly at it I didn't turn myself into quite the addict Remember when we got locked in that attic I swear those girls were trying to kill us and Five dollars of gas would get me back to my house I couldn't ask you for any more than I already have More than I already have I'll be right back, I'll be right here 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 I'll be right back Oh I'll be right back, I'll be right here I'll be right back, I'll be right here I'll be right back, I'll be right here I'll be right back I'll be right back, I'll be right here I'll be right back, I'll be right here I'll be right back, I'll be right here with you So that to me is more like Jesse Walden. Yeah, very uh, yeah, it's similar to that more so than. And again, like fifty thousand. I don't know how many times we can say it, Frank Ocean, but. Right, know. I mean that's unavoidable at this point. Well, would you guys? The sun screaming loud at. <laughs> that is my favorite lyric. Well, shout out to the Action Action shirt, by the way. Shout out to um, Action Action. What else would you say? And Jesse, I'll do you first, and then uh, Ross. What would you say is your biggest influence? Let's not. Frank Ocean, think other things because we've already established that. My biggest influence right now are the like uh, smaller artists that I've been discovering over like the past year. Uh, so, like, a relatively small artist that we both love is Zach Villery. Um, I may have mentioned him last time I was in the show, but his name is Zach Villery, and he's uh, just the best. He's got an album coming up Z A C K. V I L L E R E. I feel out of the loop now. I don't know who he is. I mean, he's just not like not super big, pretty like, like. He's got a decent following. Yeah. He's like, uh, just sort of like indie pop. Indie pop, I guess. I, I don't know. I, Which I is call what I would describe pop. your all stuff. Is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I would. I would probably say. Indie mm-hmm. pop but sure. so people like him. Uh, his girlfriend actually. Her name is Cheryl. I think Cheryl. Cheryl. I think it's Cheryl. Uh, she's an artist from Hong Kong, and she's like. I've like messaged with her before and she's like super cool and I love all her stuff. She's got uh, really an album out called Troubleshoot. Um, so good. So good. So probably those two. Mm-hmm. Right okay. Now. What would you say, Ross? Any standouts? Um, probably, honestly, Donald Glover was like such a huge influence for me. Like from like a, not, not really. Not a, the same person as Childish Gambino. <laughs> no, diff, two different people. Yeah, yeah like, right. I'm, I'm not. Have you seen that tweet? The I didn't know person. Donald Glover and Childish yeah. Gambino. <laughs> they look Yo, so I just found out they're the same person. But no, um, not really like a huge recent musical influence uh, for me. But like I have to give credit where credit's due. Like if it weren't for him, I probably never would have like tried to like reach like my full potential of like what I could do creatively like in any sense because like I saw him and I was like oh here's a dude 
that can do everything. He was on Community. He wrote for 30 Rock. He made music. Um, he wrote Atlanta. He acts like, I was like, you can really break rules and just do whatever you want. So yeah, I mean, like, I, I, would, ha I would have to say my, big my biggest influence is Donald Glover. Well, I would say that makes sense from what you've told me because with your theater background and stuff too and your film background, you mm -hmm. like the crossover, I guess. Yeah, I love the crossover. music cross with. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I think, uh, I think any person who wants to be a creator should try to cross over wherever they can. Like, because, you know, it, I mean, it's hard to, like, find the time to do more than just one creative outlet because it's, every creative industry is so, so, so hard to make it in. But, I mean, the more experience that you get crossing them over, the better because you have to. Like, so many people that are big right now, like Tyler, the creator, are becoming so good at, like, blending the visuals and, like, the music and the image and just everything. And you, this day and age, you kind of have to be able to do a little bit of everything. And that's why... Donald Glover to me is such just like a colossal like uh, figure. Yeah. Well, I know how you guys feel about Tyler the Creator because we were talking about Odd Future before here, mm -hmm. and yeah, that new album, um, Jesse. I know you're a fan. You mean for the sure. earthquake? You mean the earthquake? Yes, yeah, it's a great album, fantastic album. I mean, you kind of flipped the script with it, really. Yeah. Like, I'm used to angry oh, Tyler, and I kind of <laughs> Tyler. Oh yeah, like so with I loved. Uh, Flower Boy. I love that album. I yeah. thought it was a very cool like uh like transition for him into a new area. And I think Igor is like him going even further into oh, that area, really? but also like yeah. there's some callback feels to like his first stuff, to like his early like wolf days, you know what I mean? You like think? Okay, Yeah. Maybe I have to delve like, into it harder then. There's there's it's some songs that, that it's an incredibly sad but like empowering album. Yeah, that's like, the, the, the empowering is the the con the concept behind it. Like at, like after you're done, I I just want to say something. No, go ahead, go off. The concept is it it's insane because the whole thing is like just him it starts with him just in the middle of this like just awful like relationship, like just saying like don't leave, like, stay with me. And, like, the whole album is just, like, him coming to terms and, like, going through all these, like, toxic emotions that you feel when you're in, like, a bad relationship or an abusive relationship or anything like that. And, like, finally, like, that moment of, like, just him being able to let it go and, like, love himself. Like, that is the concept of Found myself in drowning. Yeah. Like, well, well in a way, then, to take it beautiful. back, do you think 50,000 kind of reflects that in a way? Like, yeah. a descent through, because you've gone through some yeah. shit lately. Yeah, well... Know? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's, it's, um, it starts out pretty intensely. I mean, so okay, so I'll get into the order of the album because I want to talk about that earlier. So I started with uh, the mountains because uh, I wanted to like the way it sounds, like the 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 pit, the affected vocals, the the big open chords. Like I wanted uh, something just crazy to start the album. You know what I mean? Like not pop, not anything, just like something expressive. So I started with that. The next one was Moon, which was the most poppy of all the songs I would venture to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thing. yeah. Really funny thing about Moon. Um, I like Moon, though. I, lo I, I love Moon. Moon really grew on me, too. Like, me, too. Um, it so was originally like, you hated it. You're like, it's trash. It was kidding. pretty poppy, though. Yeah, right? I'm kidding. No, original, <laughs> originally, I was just, like, worried. I, th I, thought that you, I thought that you felt like you needed it. To, like, I thought, to write that yeah, song. Yeah, I thought you, like, made it because you felt like you needed it mm -hmm. to make the album better. But, but no, nah, then I listened to it more. I was like, oh, this song just standalone is going to be, like, like a, like a single. Like, a, it's going to be a hit on the album. But um, uh, with Moon, on Bummer Pupper Summer, the second track on his on Fifty Thousand is Moon, and the second track on um, Bummer Pupper Summer is La Lune, and we didn't plan it that way. We La didn't Lune realize it until like a La month Lune after. Is French for Moon, and so, so did your brains just explode. That's the that's, that's the way we're connected. I, I was right driving now. and I called him and I was like, "Did you know this happened?" <laughs> and he like, said, "We are no have the dumbest same brains." <laughs> yeah. But anyways, you that guys was are my. Soulmates. It's we like, actually are. It's it's this. it's insane. Um. So yeah, Moon was like the big poppy, like big thing. We made a video for it. Me and Daniel did, which was really fun. It like, was good, yeah. Had a great time doing that. The next one, I think, was Teeth. That was like one of the ones that I was most proud of, and it was one of the hardest to record because of how spacious I wanted it to be as far as vocals. It didn't have any dr drums under it at all. One of the only tracks that didn't have any drums, so it was just like a very specific area of sound. Um, that it was hard to capture. Uh, I'm most proud of that one, though. And then going on, like, Picture was... I'm actually really proud of that one, too, because it was harder to write uh, than most of the other songs in the album. But, um... You can remember the order of your... 
No, I, I think picture's five. Oh, I, was say, I don't really know. <laughs> You're doing pretty good, though. Really? It's something like that. Caffeine's in there somewhere. I uh, hate caffeine. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. Yeah. <laughs> it's the one that I wrote, and I was like, you know what? I like it. I don't like it. I liked the first idea I had of it, and then I got it on, like, got it recorded, and I was like, I do not like this, but I'm going to keep it, because I think people will like it. And lo and people behold. like me. <laughs> <laughs> do you play this shit? No. I don't play caffeine. Because you don't like it. Because I don't like it. Uh... And then yeah, so as far as the progression of the album, yes, it starts very intensely because I wanted to get that get that across. Like I don't know where I'm going, I don't know where I am right now, but we're doing it. Um, and then into some fun stuff, into some like reflective stuff, and then it gets uh, at the very end of the album is where it gets like hopeful. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, but then you end with me sobbing. Well, I, I would. Why Kia Soul was more of a, it's not a sad song to me really. It's a I know it's it's not, a hopeful it's song. Not. Like it's me like. It's moving on, you know? It's like, it's moving on. Right. It's reflecting on the good times. Coming of age. Yeah, like, we're coming, there, coming of age. Yeah. Um, AKA 50,000 miles. Exactly. So we're, we've come full circle. Exactly. Well, I know, unfortunately, we're almost out of time. Oh, I could beans. sit here and talk music with you guys all day, oh, obviously, okay. if you can't tell. And I should mention one more time for WVON TV. This is, of course, the wonderful Musical Musings, sponsored by Botany Bay. And if anyone's aware, they are remodeling. They're, like, doing big things down in Lexington because now they're at 1757 Alexandria Drive in Lexington. It's a whole new location, and I've been seeing the progression of this, and they've been painting and doing all kinds of cool stuff, and it looks really cool. And then, of course, if you ever need anything you know, place to buy stuff to do stuff with, of course. Here in Richmond, right down the street from where we are right now, at 980 Commercial Drive, we have the location that's been there forever. CBD oil, whatever you want, your vape needs, get it all there. So, and if you have that stuff, listen to the podcast while you're using that stuff. That's the whole goal, right? Exactly. <laughs> Should I not have said that? Was that bad? <laughs> okay, so what do you got in mind? This is Teeth. Your teeth are stained from the coffee that you drink every morning And you hate that about yourself But you can't stop drinking coffee, or no Oh no And all the time that you wasted running around getting wasted and the night you stayed up late wondering why you ain't happy you ain't happy Can I waste your night? Just lie around and dream with me. You're talking in your sleep to me. You're talking in your sleep. Oh, so can I waste your night? Found myself in your driveway Gonna get drunk in old Charlie's uh, But I'm in your driveway oh, So can I waste your night Found myself in your driveway Gonna get drunk at old Charlie's But I'm in your driveway Oh, so can I waste your night? Just lie around and dream with me You're talking in your sleep to me 
You're talking in your sleep. Oh. Rough stuff, huh? <laughs> Gotta get drunk at O'Charlie's. <laughs> I mean, that's some deep stuff right there. I don't know. Like, yeah. I'm kind of reeling right now because I'm just trying to think, like, the guitar especially, like, the chords. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to say Frank Ocean again, but I feel like there's something. No, it is. It's, it's a very, like... Uh, I would tribute that kind of progression to Rex Orange County because that's very, okay. like, okay. Uh, chromatic. I can see that. Well, awesome. So for people who are listening um, and watching, they probably might want to find where they can get more of your guys' stuff. So do you each want to give a shout-out, Ross? And you can talk about Bummer Pupper Summer, too, sure. if you want. Yeah, uh, yeah. I released uh, Bummer Pupper Summer, which was my first full-length album, and that is on Spotify, um, Apple Music, uh, YouTube, uh, a lot of different places. Um, yeah, that would be the one to go look for for me. And then I've got um, more stuff on the way, but I'm not going to talk about that yet because it's still very early. Well, plus the stuff you're working on with Jesse, too. Yeah, plus, um, plus uh, E-Boy, E-Boy Autumn, Autumn by Mark and the Boys. <laughs> is there a hyphen there? Like, I need to know. Is it just mm. E-Boy or is it E-Hyphen How Boy? Do, you do we even E-Boy? know? I'm going to go get on TikTok right now. <laughs> yeah. uh, Figure it out. I would look for hi- E-Hyphen Boy I would, I would say Autumn. E-hyphen okay. Boy. I'm when it comes, a hyphen. I don't know. It'll be in like October I'm if we do it. A hyphen too. So yeah. it'll be, yeah. Yeah. On Halloween, just kidding. I have no idea, but that would be cool. We're gonna have a song for Halloween. Anyways, uh, stream fifty thousand and uh, whatever I have coming up next. I'm sure you'll hear about it. So you do have stuff coming up next. Yeah. Yes. I have. I have been in lengthy contract talks with a certain company with a certain music management group. Really? And that is taking forever, but it finally came to fruition, so I'm really uh, excited to see that. How did this come off. about? I know you can't reveal much, but I'm I curious. I just got I got uh, DM by some dude who runs a music service site. He put it up on his site. He loved Noon and he loved Teeth. Put those up on his uh, his like website. And then I was messaged by um, some people like a week or two later uh, about about 50,000 and I've got some some stuff on the way um, that I can't talk about. That's really exciting. <laughs> yeah, very cool. I'm very excited. Oh, I should mention, because I meant to earlier, what's with all the car stuff? Car you know? stuff? Yeah, like last time, like summertime. I, about cars. I think, uh, yeah. White Kia Soul, your album cover is, is me on top on, of a Mustang. Which, which, by the way, I have to say, I had that exact same Mustang. Really? Car, everything. That's yeah. my dad's. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know your dad's car. Mustang guy. Um, I think you were just that, that guy in middle school that would just always be drawing trucks. I hate you so much for saying those words. Is that true? No, oh no, it's but you not. you have that energy, though. <laughs> so instead of horse girl, it's car guy? It's car yeah, guy. No, it's that I think I'm subconsciously energy. super obsessed with cars, and, like, once I, I have money. I think you are, because I see it, like, proliferating through all of your work. So that's that why I sucks. Call you out. You've got car guy energy. Man, you that's you terrible. You have total car guy energy. All right. Are you going to be, after this, you're going to be tinkering in your driveway on your dance floor? <laughs> You're gonna be underneath it. I don't know how cars work. I'd blow that thing up yeah, on accident. Probably. That's funny that I saw your album cover. I was like, okay, that's number one, a wonderful picture. Was that taken with a drone? I guess. Yeah, it was one of my bu- my brother's uh, coworkers at the time. His name's Dixon. He took the photo. Shouts to Dixon. That was good. No, I love it. That's awesome. Okay, well, is there any parting shots? Because unfortunately, we're out of time. Oh, I have quite a few. Uh, oh God, here we go. My colleague and dear friend Zach Day just released his second album, or his first album, I think, the first one was the EP, called "Good Night." Stream "Good Night" by Zach Day on Spotify. Uh, my other good friend Emma Day, unrelated, uh, is re-releasing her EP pretty soon, uh, and then releasing a new EP, and then releasing an album later this year. So be on the lookout for all that stuff. Uh, Would they want to come on the show? I, yes, I'm sure they would. I have reached, I've like told them about it. I'm like, hey, come do this thing. It's really fun. But uh, anything other than that, my band that I'm in just released an album uh, called Francis. uh, It's called uh, From Lion's Den and the White People. Look for that on Spotify. And that's all I got. All right, I'm going to stop. Francis, that sounds very odd for you to me. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know if it's the one name title, yeah, like yeah. The, the obscure name or something. Yeah. Ross, you got any parting shots before we have to wrap this up? Stream 50,000. <laughs> stream Bummer Pupper Summer. All major stream music uh, streaming platforms. Listen to E-Boy Autumn when it comes out this October by Mark and the Boys. Yeah, you guys, please support Lesl Music, especially EKU, recent college grads. You know, like, we're out here getting degrees still, She's but... Doing dang thing. You know, I know, right? So, 
Well, it was awesome to have you guys on, and really good to see it. you. Good to meet you, Ross. Yeah, good to see you again, Jesse, absolutely. and I'll be seeing you soon, probably. But for another edition of Musical Musings, as always, sponsored by Botany Bay for WBON-TV, I'm Marissa Hempel.